Now, I'll be doing a video where I talk about cytogenetics, karyotypes, types of chromosomes, G banding, also known as Giesma banding, inversion, and translocation. Now, this is episode one of the series, and the series will be talking about the intricate and unique properties of chromosomes and why they are so useful in genetics, and not only genetics, but in other fields of science and even more. So, Let's just start off with what is cytogenetics. Cyto so cyto what you need to know is that cytogenetics is an extensive field of genetics that deals with the unique and intricate properties of chromosomes. So just like I said, this is the field that we're studying right now because we're talking about chromosomes and their properties and how their properties help us transfer genetic information uh, via uh, genetics. And then a person who studies this field is called a cytogeneticist. Uh, and yeah, so what is a karyotype? So a karyotype is an organized fashion of chromosomes under a microscope. So by convention, the chromosomes that are organized um, by size, uh, this, oh, so by, okay, by convention, chromosomes are organized by size, right? So the smallest numbers have the biggest chromosomes. So for example, if you looked at chromosome one, two, and three, we can tell that these chromosomes are the three biggest out of the whole karyotypes. So thus that we can say that we can actually inverse this relationship, saying that there's an inverse relationship. The smaller the size, the bigger the number. And so the only exception to this um, idea is the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. So types of chromosomes you need to know. So metacentric chromosomes are when the centromere of the chromosome divides the P and Q arm by roughly the same length. What you need to know is that the P arm is the short arm, and the Q arm is the long arm. And so, um, how do I remember this? Well, I remember that P uh, stands for petite, right? So the petite arm or the short arm. So uh, what metacentric does is that it essentially just divides these into even lengths, roughly about the same length. And then, and then that's why it's called metacentric because meta means middle. The prefix meta means middle. So it's centromere is in the middle. And so sub-metacentric is when the centromere is slightly off the middle of the chromosome. Hence, the Q arm, which is the long arm, is slightly longer than the P arm. And then acrocentric is when the centromere is significantly near the end of the chromosome. Hence, the Q arm, which is the long arm, is significantly longer, longer than the P arm. So what you need to know is that uh, essentially acrocentric is almost to the end, but it's not at the end, thus that the Q arm is significantly longer than the P arm. So telecentric is the centromere is completely off the chromosome, hence no P arm exists, because if the centromere is off the chromosome, then there's no other arm, meaning that there's no smaller arm, thus P arm does not exist. Let's talk about Giesma, or G bending. So as we have already claimed, chromosomes are arranged by size. But as you can imagine, if we were to arrange chromosomes such as 8, 9, and 10, then we would be dealing with chromosomes with almost near the same size, making it harder for us to organize the chromosomes. So scientists have come up with a method to easily differ from chromosomes with roughly the same size. And one of the methods they use, there's obviously many methods, but we'll just be talking about this one, is, um, giesma, no, is giesma bending or G bending. So G bending is essentially where we where we use a dye called giesma, hence giesma bending, to stain chromosomes. And the reason why this method or bending is so useful is because, as we've claimed already, chromosomes are arranged by their size and properties, meaning that each of them are unique. So if we were to stain them using this dye, we would notice the different regions in which chromosomes stain darkly or lightly, hence making it e easy for us to identify chromosomes and arrange them by their number. So inversion. Inversion is a chromosome breakage that inverses or reorientates the fragment of a chromosome that got broken off into the wrong order as it was before. So what you need to know is that a chromosome breakage is when a fragment of the chromosome breaks off. So inversion is when that fragment that broke off essentially inverses its uh, orientation so it returns back in the wrong orientation as it, as it was before and don't worry in the next slide you will see a picture of this so you can better visualize it now there are two types of inversions pericentric and paracentric pericentric paracentric uh no pericentric is when the inverted segment uh i forgot to uh, highlight one of the pericentric but it's fine 
uh, I meant to highlight pericentric. Pericentric is when the inverted segment of the chromosome lies within the centromere. And paracentric is when the inverted part lies outside of the chromosome. So, um, how do I remember this? Well, I remember that when we're talking about pericentric, uh, there's an I. So, and there's an I, right? Peri, I. So, it's inside. And then, by negation, I use I say para, paracentric is outside. So, that's a cool way to remember it. So, all you need to know is that the difference of these is essentially where their centromere is located in the inverted segment. Now, an individual carrying one copy of the inverted segment and another one of the normal segment is called an inversion heterozygote, meaning that the chromosome just consists of one normal segment and one inverted segment. Now, in crossing over in meiosis, we know that there is an exchange of genetic material between homologous genes on chromosomes. Gene, uh, homologous just means the same, or so they, they encode for the same genes. Not necessarily identical, just encode for the same genes. Therefore, for uh, the exchange to happen, there must be a synapse and a synaptal no complex in order to align. Now, not necessary. It does not must. It does not have to be the complex. Um, in some cases of meiosis, species don't use this complex. But uh, we're just gonna say that we need a complex and a synapse in this video in order to align. So basically, synapse is all you need to know. We'll do a video on meiosis. Is essentially the alignment of chromosomes, specifically homologs, in a in a neat fashion. But with but so to do this, so for these, uh, so but what if we had an inverted chromosome and a regular chromosome, right? So what if we wanted to synapse these or, I mean, cross them over? What if we wanted to cross over an inverted chromosome and a normal chromosome? To do this, we would need an inversion loop. And an inversion loop is essentially a loop that helps permit the homologous genes on both chromosomes to permit their info despite the inverted sequence. So essentially what you need to know is that an inversion loop is a loop that helps uh, an inverted chromosome and a regular chromosome uh, Com recombine their genes, or in other words, cross over. Now, here is a picture of uh, inversion. So you can see, I just want you to look in this video, and now you can see this is a loop, actually. So synapsis in prophase 1, that's the inversion loop, pericentric, paracentric. Uh, so just pause the video and kind of look at this and analyze it for yourself. So, yeah, let's move on. Uh, okay, well, that was not supposed to be there. Well, uh, that was a picture for translocation. I will go back to that slide after we're done reading this. So, now let's talk about another chromosome breakage called translocation. Translocation is a chromosome breakage followed by the reattachment to a non-homologous chromosome or a different part of a chromosome. We will talk about three principal ones. So, um, just for you in case, non-homologous means that uh, essentially the chromosomes don't encode for the same gene. Uh, they encode for different genes so they don't have homologous genes. So so basically, translocation is when you have the, the chromosome breakage, which is just a fragment of the chromosome breaking off, and then the broken off fragment returns to either a different part of the chromosome or to another non-homolog. And so there are three principal ones. The first one we'll be talking about is unbalanced translocation. So this is essentially when a chromosome break and a subsequent reattachment of the chromosome to a non-homologous chromosome in one way event, meaning that there's no reciprocal event for this translocation. And also, since there is no reciprocal event for this translocation, the totality of the genetic information in, in for the the totality of the genetic information is altered. Thus, this is why it's called unbalanced. I should have included that. Because when there's no reciprocal event, we have changed the totality of genetic information. Thus, this is an unbalanced translocation. Now, a reciprocal balanced translocation is kind of the opposite of this, right? It's just translocation, but there is a reciprocal event. So there's essentially one translocation and then another translocation. So we can say, well, there's breaks on two non-homologous chromosomes, and then the resulting fragments switch places. So kind of a reciprocal event. Now, probably the most foc mo important one you need to focus on, obviously focus on all three, but this is a very important one, Robert Robertsonian translocation, also known as chromosome fusion, involves the fusion of two non-homologous chromosomes. So chromosome fusion is accompanied by the loss of, a, of the centromeres and by the loss of, uh, I should have said one of the centromeres, and the loss of a chromosome 
short arm, so P arm. So essentially, what you need to know, it's chromosome fusion, and so chromosome fusion is essentially accompanied by um, the loss of a centromere and the loss of a P arm, or a short arm. The chromosomes involved in a Robertsonian translocation are usually acrocentric or telocentric. Remember we said acrocentric was the centromere is almost completely off, or telocentric is when it's completely off. These have little or no genetic information in the short arm, thus the organism's Thus, the organism does not suffer. Yeah, so this is a picture for translocation. So just look at it, analyze this picture. All the information we just talked about involves uh, what's going on in this picture. And that will be uh, do it for Variation in Chromosomes Episode 1. Thank you for watching and stay tuned because we will be posting a lot more soon. Thank you.